Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering woke CEO who fired thousands gets massive lawsuit. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. The CEO of Tyson is in some trouble. He has multiple complaints against him and the board of directors and the company now for illegal hiring practices. Also for discriminatory hiring practices. Also for hiring child labor. Child labor 13 years old to work in their slaughterhouses. How did something like that happen? Why don't they pay attention to what they're doing? Why are they getting sued for all this? Well, from the Daily Mail, Tyson Foods slapped with civil rights complaints over un-American migrant hiring bonanza. And from America First Legal, America First Legal files complaints with DOJ, EEOC, and Iowa agency against Tyson Foods for potential violations of law regarding citizenship discrimination, racial discrimination, and child labor. This is one of these woke companies that don't care about American citizens. They don't care about their responsibility to their employees. They recently shut down a food processing plant, laying off 1,300 people, and then essentially replacing those hires with migrants seeking asylum. Now, the plant is closed. They aren't sending migrants to the same plant that they just closed. They're sending them to other processing plants. However, that plant they decided to close to get a little bit more efficient and make a little bit more money put people out of work that are going to have nowhere else to go. So somehow they have unlimited opportunities for people for short-term and long-term employment if they're not American citizens. And depending on where you live, you might not be familiar with this, but a small town that has a big processing plant becomes really the lifeblood of the entire town. Not just those jobs at that plant, but everything around that plant. All the businesses that support all the people who live in that town are really dependent on that one big employer. Tyson isn't the only big company to do this. And of course, big companies need to shut down their processing plants sometimes. But it really is a strange coincidence that at the same time, they're firing their American staff. They're clamoring to hire people who were not born in the United States. From the Daily Mail, Tyson Foods slapped with civil rights complaints over un-American migrant hiring bonanza. Tyson Foods has been slapped with a series of civil rights complaints accusing the meatpacking firm of discriminating against American workers and favoring migrants. America First Legal, a conservative group, filed several civil rights complaints against the $54 billion company, saying it offered perks to migrants that it denied to U.S. citizens. That's beyond dispute. They even offered legal services paid for by the company to their migrant aliens. Tyson faced a boycott in March from conservatives and normal people who were angry that the company was firing 1,300 workers at an Iowa pork plant while hiring scores of newcomer migrants in New York City. The company says it does not favor migrant labor over Americans. Reed Rubenstein, an AFL lawyer, accused Tyson executives of acting like global citizens who live and work in the U.S. by happenstance. Quote, our citizens and consumers deserve companies that put America and her people first, Rubenstein said. It's not like the food that they're processing in American plants is not being sold to American consumers. It is. So why not favor American employees? Treat Americans better. You might as well. If Americans are your customers, maybe they'll appreciate it. Rubenstein's group, America First Legal, filed a federal civil rights complaint with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and also asked the Department of Justice and the Iowa Civil Rights Commission to probe the company. When a legal activist group files a complaint with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, oftentimes they don't follow up on it. But because they don't follow up on it, they notify the people who filed the complaint and then they've met the requirements so they can then go file a lawsuit. They just did this with IBM a month or two ago. AFL, which is led by former Trump administration officials, also wrote to Tyson's CEO, Donnie King, and its board. The complaints refer to the roughly 42,000 migrants among Tyson's 120,000 strong workforce. They refer to the shuttering of a plant in Perry, Iowa, which was announced in March. Meanwhile, the company's corporate responsibility boss, Garrett Dolan, said Tyson wanted to double its number of immigrant employees to 84,000 in 2024, according to the filings. 
The letters refer to Tyson's partnership with the Tent Foundation and a 2022 pledge to hire 2,500 refugees in the U.S. over three years. Tyson also spends $1.5 million each year on helping migrants pay lawyers to get U.S. papers and work permits. And not all of us have legal expenses, but many average people do have legal expenses. Are you offering those same legal reimbursements to your employees that don't need lawyers for U.S. papers and work permits? Maybe they're going through a divorce. Maybe they're dealing with some other local matter they need a lawyer for. Why not help them too? Donnie King, Tyson's CEO, said the company spent $2.4 million on migrant legal aid in an annual report, according to the complaint. The company does not provide similar benefits to American citizens, according to AFL, and they very easily could provide exactly the same kind of benefits with exactly the same kind of budget to their American citizen employees. The way they could do it is through prepaid legal, for example. That's a service where you can spend a certain amount of money and have prepaid legal services and get discounted services, or if your company is paying for it, free legal services up to a certain limit. And that would really help their employees, especially their employees on a budget, which would probably be just about all their employees. The complaints also refer to Tyson's record of hiring underage migrants in dangerous overnight cleaning shifts and in its diversity hiring targets. The various policies amount to discrimination against U.S. workers, and Tyson needs to be probed, says the complaint. The company, which is headquartered in Springdale, Arkansas, did not answer Daily Mail's request for comment. Now, all these big companies, they have budgets for promotional departments, they have budgets for marketing departments, and they have media departments as well. Why they didn't have their corporate communications staff explain, oh no, here's how all the complaints against us are wrong, is pretty suspicious. If there was no legitimacy to these complaints, first of all, America First Legal would never file them because they're a great legal organization. But if there really was nothing to these complaints, they could have responded and dispelled all of these complaints. Notably, they decided to not respond. During the boycott in March, Tyson said it was not cutting American jobs to hire migrants and that it only recruited newcomers with work permits. Quote, any insinuation that we would cut American jobs to hire immigrant workers is completely false, Tyson said in a statement. Now, there's no conspiracy against Tyson. There's no conservative group of media people that are getting together and trying to make it look like Tyson's doing something it's not doing because they're out to get Tyson or maybe I'm out to get Tyson. No one's out to get Tyson. Tyson likely is doing what they're being accused of doing. All media can do is say, listen, we've got reports of this. We've got reports of that. We see things on your corporate communications. We see things in your corporate filings, like you're spending $2.4 million on migrant legal services and only offering that to your migrant employees. The data is out there. The talk is out there. So if it's not true, they really need to speak out against it. Just denying it is not going to work. But if they're really doing it, then all they can do is really deny it and hope that it all goes away. But it's definitely not going away. Industry insiders told DailyMail.com that meatpacking firms often target migrants because Americans aren't interested in the low pay and unpleasant conditions. Well, of course, low pay is what the company decides it's going to be. It doesn't have to be low pay to do certain jobs. For example, from Bloomberg, and this was from November. Tyson Foods got fat and lazy, says CEO, plotting a turnaround. Quote, coming through the pandemic, we gotten very inefficient. According to CEO Donnie King, we got really comfortable. We got fat and lazy. Well, fat and lazy is you've got more than enough money to pay people. So stop trying to say, oh, these jobs are jobs no one will do. And they're also very low paid jobs. Well, pay people fairly and they'll work there. Pay people so low that only people in complete desperation would take the job. And sure, then it's a low-paying job, but it doesn't have to be. Conservatives and normal people on social media accuse Tyson of being unpatriotic. The EEOC, which enforces laws against workplace discrimination, does not have to act on complaints, which have shot up in recent years. AFL has filed complaints with the EEOC targeting workplace diversity schemes by the NFL, Major League Baseball, and dozens of companies, including Starbucks, McDonald's, Morgan Stanley, Activision Blizzard and Kellogg and America First Legal has had some good results filing these complaints, threatening these companies to get back within the law with all of their business practices and filing lawsuits. They raise tough questions for Tyson's 
$13 million a year CEO Donnie King, who has led the company since 2021, during which time it has funded the campaign chess of President Biden, Nikki Haley, and others, according to Open Secrets. But apparently not Donald Trump. And to understand how Tyson has been managing its company, Tyson Foods got fat and lazy, says CEO plotting a turnaround. This new CEO, when he came in in 2021, he was the fifth CEO in five years. At least they don't keep changing CEOs every year now. It's extremely unusual to have a CEO that lasts a year. CEOs normally will stay for five years, 10 years or longer. So the mismanagement of this company seems to have been absolutely out of control. Prices for beef, chicken and pork surged amid booming demand and supply disruptions during the pandemic, boosting profits at companies such as Tyson. Then came a downturn in demand and America's biggest meat company was hit hard. Adjusted net income for the fiscal year ended in September, plunged 85% to the lowest in more than a decade, with profit margins largely trailing those of publicly traded rivals. So these big companies, and you know, you're paying people like this guy millions of dollars, even if it wasn't this guy during the beginning of the pandemic, but CEOs like this guy that you're paying millions of dollars to, did they not anticipate that the pandemic would eventually end? Because you know, kind of, of course, eventually it was going to end. No, apparently they didn't. Their competitors did. Their profits were down 85% at Tyson. Tyson's shares have lost 24%, trailing most peers in an index of global meat suppliers. S&P Global Incorporated slash Tyson's credit rating to BBB, the second lowest investment grade credit rating, and cited inefficient production assets among the factors that contributed to the company's underperformance in recent years. This means they couldn't even run their plants efficiently. They didn't know what to do with their plants. It's not like they just got into business yesterday. It's also not like sometimes a company will acquire another company and they're not familiar with the operations. They don't even really know the employees all that well, but it all looks good on paper. So then they do a deal and they spend millions or sometimes billions of dollars. And then they struggle to merge the two companies to operate them efficiently. That's understandable. Company cultures can clash sometimes. But it doesn't look like that was the problem that Tyson had. It was literally their own production plants that baffled them. They didn't know how to manage them, even though they've been doing this for a very long time. Corrective measures and investments in more productive assets will help drive profit improvement, particularly in the chicken business, the agency said. But we were not as good as we needed to be, King said, adding that we're well on our way to being there again, and we will be there. King was named head of Tyson in June 2021, replacing Dean Banks as part of a revolving door of CEO changes over a five-year period. The commodities veteran first joined the company in 1982 and rose to lead the poultry business before leaving in 2017. He rejoined Tyson in September 2020. Getting Tyson back on track is well underway, according to the CEO. The company has, for the past 18 months, focused on improving the things that aren't sexy, such as labor and yield management. It has also taken a series of more drastic measures, including closing eight plants across several U.S. states as part of an asset review process the company doesn't expect to finish anytime soon. Quote, I don't know that we ever will, and I don't think you or anyone else should ever want us to be finished, King said. I want you guys to have some responsibility for your employees. And the mismanagement that has caused these people to essentially lose their jobs, because if the company was managing itself well, it wouldn't have lost these jobs or it could have taken a little bit more time to phase these jobs out of existence as they close certain plants to improve their efficiency. And improving the efficiency is great, but if the company was so sloppy that they were fat and lazy during the pandemic and didn't anticipate an end to the pandemic and how they'd have to operate differently when the pandemic subsided, it tells you these people shouldn't have lost their jobs. What they need is a strategic plan that supports the business and their employees at the same time. I'm all for lowering costs. I appreciate lowering costs. But supposedly in this kind of work, there's a lot of high turnover. So if there is high turnover, then why are you laying people off at all? Sure, if you have to close a certain plant, it's understandable you may not have jobs for those people. But are you sure there's no way to reorganize your work so that you can continue to offer work to the people that actually want it? It doesn't seem like they're too worried about that. Facility closures are less a response to the ongoing market misfortunes than part of a continuous process of modernization that includes the gradual replacement of old plants with new ones that are more advanced and better aligned with Tyson's strategy, he added. To underscore his point, King said a chicken slaughtering plant that Tyson closed earlier this year in Glen Allen, Virginia, 
150 miles from Tyson's new Danville facility, couldn't be updated and would never compete with a 2023 asset that had all the automation, all the technology, size, and scale and flow. It is legitimate to say that a plant that was set up decades ago doesn't have the room and the setup and the technology to be able to compete with another plant that has the automation and was recently set up. However, why are they so desperately looking to hire new people and saying, oh, we can't find the labor we need, we must hire all of these migrants, if they're so busy closing what they call inefficient plants? Not because the plants are unprofitable, but because the plants can't compete with their newer, more automated plants. They could keep their American workers. They could be a little bit inefficient. It would be okay for them to be a little inefficient. They would still be profitable. The CEO himself said Tyson Foods got fat and lazy. So it's not that they have such a shortage of workers that are willing to do the hard work. It's that they want to be more efficient to make more profit, and they don't seem to care what happens to the employees. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.